every day I would sit in that makeup chair for an hour and a half and just going, why, why did I choose to do this? You know, it was just like three tattoos that they had to put on and then a bunch of dirt. Well, first of all, I have to say, I absolutely love the show. I binged through all five episodes that they gave us like right away. I just, I loved it. So awesome. it's great. Um, when you guys, when you first read the script or were told the premise of the series, what was your initial reaction to it? I was so excited by it because I think like we're in such an exciting sp like space in TV at the moment where we're kind of genre bending. And, you know, I, I thought like, oh, a half hour like workplace comedy about pirates. Like, that's so fun. I've never seen that before. I guess my expectation, I thought it was going to be um, smaller. <laughs> like I thought, I don't know. I thought the scale was going to be smaller. And and it was so amazing to kind of turn up and because of Tyker's involvement, you know, it was such a, it was such a huge operation making the show. I kind of felt like I was in like a Marvel movie every day or something, you know, it was always like things were on fire and there were stunts and like, so that, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. You know, it's such a, it's such a unique premise for a show and yeah, it was, it was the best. I read the script and I immediately, uh, you know, it made me laugh out loud a bunch of times and, and because of the people attached, you know, I've been a huge fan of Tyka ever since you know, his film Boy and growing up and, and, and just watching a bunch of the stuff he's done. And then David Jenkins with People of Earth. I just knew that that combination. And then once I saw that Reese was attached, like David, Taika, Reese, it's like the holy trinity of hilarity. You know, it's just, I knew it was going to be hilarious. So diving in, it was just like, I need to be a part of this. I want to be a part of this. And, and so I was chasing the casting director, Alison Jones, for like a year, just like, give me this audition. <laughs> And finally, I got the opportunity. And when I booked it, I was I was so over the moon because like Nathan said, I just thought it was a fun script. But then showing up on stage and seeing that they built this massive real sized ship on the stage, you know, that had airbags. So it would rock back and forth and, you know, with this huge, you know, screen around it. It was just like, oh, my God, we're making a little <laughs> comedy, but with a massive stage that's like a Marvel movie. And, and so that combination just blew my mind. It was just exciting every day. Does and anybody get got, seasick with the airbags? I was just about to say I got <laughs> I got seasick for the first week of shooting. I'd come home and be very miserable <laughs> because of the rocking and the screen moving up and down with real ocean footage. It was just and the guy with this wind machine in your face. It was just too much. It was just like too much. Yeah, there was a lot too of much ocean, ocean, for... ocean vibes. And yeah, seasickness happened. I knew David Jenkins' work. I I was a fan of People of Earth and. Um, I actually knew David in New York too as a playwright and um, I was a huge fan also of Taika from a long time. You know, I remember telling everybody to see the movie of what we do in the shadows and thinking it was so funny. And it's similarly to Nathan when I got it and when I got the audition and part of the audition was a sort of, um, yeah, a, a, a prompt, like a, like a document, like you were being interviewed as a pirate. And so I, my thought was like thinking of what we do in the shadows. I, I was always, I was always thinking it's like, it's like what we do with the shadows, only pirates instead of vampires, or like it's like the office set on a, set on a ship. What we do in the Alice shadows. Jones, yeah, because Alex <laughs> Jones cast the office, and, and so that was like my thinking. And then when we got there, it, yeah, it was like epic. It was so like it was this huge ship, and it's all these sort of grand performances and. And, uh, you know, early on in the season, Reese actually compared it to Blackadder, which is this old um, British sitcom, which is this really like farcical, broad, but very smart, funny sitcom from like the 80s um, on BBC uh, with Rowan Atkinson. And I was like, oh, right, that's it. I have to get rid of that, of uh, those other ideas about like sort of droll, understated humor. And we just have to commit to this like kind of big, like combination of like absurd comedy and kind of rollicking adventure, you know? And cause it's actually something new. It, it's really hard to actually, there's nothing on TV that's really like it, you know, comparing it to different things. Even if other things that Taika has done or that David has done, it's, it doesn't really, capture it you know i got really into like all of the pirates after i played this game assassin's creed black flag so i knew who steed bonnet was um <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious for you guys like what was the most surprising thing in the show that turned out to be a hundred percent true because it is the premise is based on a true story does anyone have anything that comes to mind you know there's something about reese playing steed that's just perfect because reese is so good at being a manager we saw that in flight of the concords and so 
the fact that he's this really proper, well-spoken, intelligent man trying to delegate these bunch of idiots and just, you know, it was just, you know, we're not good pirates. You know, we are supposed to be very, very, very terrible pirates. And the fact that we have this man who's trying to just educate us and make us, you know, function as a very dysfunctional group. It was very on point for me as Steve Bonnet, someone who's never seen blood, you know, never, never stepped foot outside of the safety of his comfort zones. Um, suddenly being on a ship with these murderers and killers, <laughs> it was pretty, pretty epic to see that transformation. And weirdly, you do research and there's a surprising amount of stuff that is actually true. I mean, Steve was, you know, all the facts of Steve Bonnet's life or later are true. He paid the pirates a salary. We didn't, when no one else did, he, he did all these things that are laid out in the pilot and it's true. And he did have this sort of relationship with Blackbeard. Like, there's, like the story of Blackbeard, who's obviously much more famous, it's like, they get to they connect, but they're 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 joined, but then they break apart and they're not together, and then they connect again, and like all the research doesn't say like what's going on in their relationship, but clearly there's some they have some intense weird relationship, um, and so they're but actually the show I think is in some particulars fairly accurate. But there are these weird, intriguing blank spots that David and the writers sort of fill in. And I think the show is sort of like really like filling in these sort of like historical blanks in a really like interesting way about their relationship. Definitely. And kind of extrapolating from what that relationship could be and then imagining what the relationship between all the pirates could have been like, actually. Yeah. Um, what is the best and worst things about your costumes that you wear on the show, Nathan? <laughs> oh my God, that's such a good question. That's a good question. That's a really good question. The costume design is so genius. I remember the costume designer showing me when we were like doing my fittings, I got shown pictures of like Boy George because <laughs> she wanted it to look kind of like 80s, like queer, cool. So I I love the jacket that I wear. I just think it's really chic and I wanted to keep it. I wasn't allowed. The worst thing is probably the shoes, actually. My like my like gorgeous like kitten heel that I wear <laughs> in the show. That that they weren't they weren't the most comfortable thing in the world. Um, and that I hard to walk in. <laughs> but um yeah, I really, really loved that. I really coveted that red jacket. I thought it was really cool. My costume was basically like a a set of pajamas, like it was the most comfortable thing to wear. Like it was just like a long blousy shirt and like pants that like were too big for me. It was kind of amazing. Like it was more, and it was also hot out. So it was like, it was great. The main bummer about my uh, setup was that every day I had to like, I mean, I really enjoyed spending time with the makeup department, they're amazing, which is good because they had to spend all time like making this whole thing sunburned and dirty. And it took like a lot of time. And my legs sunburned and dirty. It was a lot of like, uh, uh, you know, I'm not, it was a lot of skin showing. And so there was a lot to, you know, there's a lot of makeup involved. Me, like an idiot, you know, we got to create our own characters. Luckily, like David was very open to our interpretation. And like an idiot, I was like, oh, yeah, no, my character will have three tattoos. <laughs> and so every <laughs> every day I would sit in that makeup chair for an hour and a half and just going, why, why did I choose to do this? You know, it was just like three tattoos that they had to put on and then a bunch of dirt and just messed up hair. It was just like the easiest show to work on because you could show up totally messed up and then be like, that yeah you're you're ready to go for camera you know because because we were so dirty so like frizzed up and um coming home at night after a long day of shooting just covered in soot it was uh it was quite an experience for four months well i gotta wrap up but thank you guys so much for your time and i love the show i can't wait for everyone to see it thanks thank you so much thanks take care thanks everybody